Thank you so much for sticking to Y254. My name is Elizabeth Ngina. Our topic of discussion today, as I told you earlier, is on developments made in autism. And in this, in this context, we're looking at uh, from starting from the from April, that is the Autism Awareness Month so far, and uh, probably what, what plans for the future are. So for that, I have two guests with me. I call them two experts. Uh, close to me is Dr. Lincoln Kamau who is the director of clinical research that in, autis in Autism Light. And uh, close, uh, close by there is Jessica Heller, the international autism consultant in Autism Light. So thank you so much, Dr. Lincoln and Heller, for joining us today. So without, uh, I will, uh, for joining us for this discussion. So let's just get to the discussion. So for this whole time you the uh, for the media tour that you've been having this whole time to and the training that you have been having have you seen any impact so far well let's go back let me start by saying we are glad to be back here this was Welcome. actually our first media interview in the month of april okay. and we are glad to be back yeah we can say we are having a lot of impact in the media awareness we have been doing the media the trainings the trainings and awareness events we have been having in the country and one reason we would quantify that is we recently had a donor his dr guru he owns the he's the ceo of the dev dev key group of companies okay he's based out of royal he has he has donated as a philanthropic donor yeah. to be to construct 47 schools in the 47 counties yes so you can you, by by one person coming out and volunteering their money to build such you can actually quantify see we are making impact yeah. we have also heard from a lot of parents teachers we have we have gotten a lot of inquiries from public institutions about autism yes. what's autism the prognosis this week in fact on yeah, and I think it's next week. We are also meeting with PCA Kikuyu Hospital. It's also a it's a pri, pri, private public hospital that's interested in autism work. So yeah, we have seen some impact. Wow, it seems you have been busy since April to date. Yeah, uh, and uh, we'll get we will get back to to the part of the. I would really want to know a lot about this mm -hmm. the the donor, mm -hmm. but before that, uh, the Kenya youth, uh, the Kenya young members of county assembly met to discuss on how to improve the conditions of autistic persons mm -hmm. so have have they helped so far well yeah we had a motion passed yesterday the nyandarwa county passed an autism motion yesterday and on friday the 5th i yeah. believe garissa assembly passed an autism education motion yes that was the f that's it's the first in kenya and actually the first in africa yes so the the mcs from both nyandarwa and garissa yeah. attended the lead read okay. and we are also hearing that we are hearing and there is action from the other 20 uh, 20 county mcs yeah. who attended the event you know autism is a is is a is a is a is a cause for concern for all of us. One in 40, the last time we were here, the CDC, the Center for Disease Control in the United States had one in 65 school going kids have autism. Yeah. The statistic changed in May to one in 40. Wow, that it, is really yeah, so we Yeah, so it's t we, we can't just sit and do nothing. It's mm -hmm. time everybody in the country did something, and especially those who are in charge of making legislative efforts. Yes. Yeah. yeah and I mean, at Autism Lights, we are focused really on awareness and inclusion and acceptance. And after doing the retreat in Naivasha with the young MCAs, yes. we have really seen that as soon as people are aware of the issue, there are steps they can then take. Okay, well, on that, how many counties showed up for, for it? Yeah, the retreat? Yeah, we had about 20 counties. Yeah. Well, yeah. what about the other counties that were not represented? What are you planning to do to reach out to them? Yeah, we are planning to get to them, but e events like this also reach out to them. Okay. Yeah, as much as we want to get to everyone, yeah, these leaders are appointed, these leaders are elected by their people to champion causes like this. Certainly. Yeah, and autism is a concern. Autism doesn't just affect the children with autism. Yes. We have research showing and from our experience, once a kid gets diagnosed with autism, mm -hmm. the, the mothers have to stay home. The mothers, most of whom we are 
productive in the economy have to stay home. Yes. Then it affects everyone in the family, everyone in the county. So as much as we are doing the outreach there, there is a responsibility for these leaders also to come and reach out to us yeah. so that we can address these issues. So, so far you can say the outreach has been very, has been a success. Yeah, we have been to, we have been everywhere. We have been in Kirifi County, okay. Garissa, Kajiado, yeah. Nyadarwa. So we, yeah, we actually heard from the Kisumu, and Kis, I think it's Kisumu Rural MP. So we are hearing from all these audiences. And what about the sustainable, uh, the uh, a long-term sustainable, uh, a, uh, a long-term sustainable solution in that uh, from April to date, there's a lot that has been talked about autism. We have mm. been hearing it a lot. So do we have a strategy that will ensure that we're not just going to hear it for maybe a, a few more months and then that's it. Do you have uh, yeah, a long-term solution for that? Yeah, like Jesse mentioned, we have both awareness and treatment. Yes. So treatment is where like the, 40, the, the 47 schools I mentioned that will be built in the counties. Yes. Because we, cause, we, we, we create awareness individuals with autism come up we have to treat them and that's where the wrong term so like now garissa and Nyandarwa that have passed the autism education motions mm -hmm. in their public schools they are going to construct classes for autism and we are going to educate the teachers and paraprofessionals how to run kids institutions for students with autism i mean classes for kids with autism then from there it will be a self-sustaining program well um Right now in Kenya, we, we, we are experiencing a corruption crisis. Mm -hmm. And how, 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 first of all, how are you going to ensure that these schools that are going to be set up receive uh, the right trained personnel? for that and also to ensure that the funds given like I, I i just assume so many donors will come up maybe people from the private sectors we have the government maybe chipping in well wishes so do how well are we going to how how what are you going to do to ensure that these funds get uh, uh fulfill the intended purpose you see we are clinicians <laughs> so our primary responsibility is to train on interventions and make sure these kids and these families are getting cutting edge interventions like we do. We, we, we mentioned, I don't know if you mentioned this, but we work, both work in Boston. So we want to bring the treatments that we do in Boston to our kids here in Kenya. Yes. So yeah, we will do due diligence on our clinical interventions. The corruption, the, how the money is spent, that one is for, for ad county administrators and other government officials, that's yes. their ball. Well, uh, when we were here in April, we did a number of different trainings. We did a training in FICA for about 50 teachers where we talked to them about different practices that they can use in the schools to help uh, better teach yes. children with autism. We also did another two other trainings with parents to help them understand the best ways to help their children succeed. And so okay. that's sort of where our focus is on mm -hmm. making sure that the people that are working closely with children with autism have the, the right red skills training and knowledge. And yeah. yeah, and coming to that, yeah, there is a point on mother on mothers. We are also doing a lot of training to mothers and fathers of persons with autism. And yeah. that also ties back to your sustainability. Yes. These individuals with autism, they are 24 seven in their homes. Yeah. So we are also doing, we are actually launching an initiative, a new initiative in the next few months. It will be called Mama Kwa Mama. Mm -hmm. This is where we will be able to train one mother we will be able to train other mothers using a trainer to train a model. So with that initiative, again, we'll be able to reach a lot of audiences and there will be a lot of sustainability too. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, Hela, kindly, uh, can you expound more on the, you talked about the initiative, can you expound more on it, where you are educating people in Thika and mm -hmm. mothers, yeah? Yeah, sure. So we did a training in Thika. Yes. There were about 50 teachers there that we gave this training to. It was mostly about an introduction to autism as well as ABA, which is Applied Behavior Analysis, mm -hmm. and that is a technique that is used to uh, build skills kind of slowly and uh, little by little okay. with children with autism, because mm -hmm. focusing on some of those smaller uh, achievements is really important. Okay. And then we did as well uh, the, parent, the trainings that we did for parents. One was with a organization called the Differently Talented Society of Kenya. Yes. And then another one was at the Buruburu Phase 1 Primary School. And again, we talked a lot about 
you know, an introduction to what is autism, what is not autism. There are a lot of myths out there, and fighting stigma is definitely one of the things. That yes, we're no, no, towards. no, yeah, 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 on that. Uh, have you only been so far? Have you only been able to reach people within and out, uh, like just slightly outside Nairobi, right? Those are the trainings that we did in April, and yep. that was primarily right around Nairobi. But okay. while we are here in these two weeks, we are continuing to do more trainings, and we're going to be going to uh, Garissa and Nakuru and Thamburu, other places that are much wow, further hey. away. <laughs> you have a lot of traveling yeah, to do. Yeah, and autism rights is not just the two of us. We have a team in the country. So when we are away back in the United States like we were for the last one month, yes. we have been able to do trainings out in Kirifi County, we have been able to do trainings in, in Garissa, Kajiado, Nyandarwa. Then we, we also have individuals, celebrities in the media who have embraced the autism cause. For yeah. instance, Eddie Butita has done a very good job with us. He has, when he does his campus tours, mm -hmm. he mentions autism, what's autism. He, yeah, he has a pledge that he, the audience is spread on their commitment to create awareness for autism and he has done that in Eldoret mm -hmm. at, the Mo, at the Mo University, he has yes. done that in Kabarak, Ijaton, the Keyukat in Juja, yeah. Machakos. In fact, we, are, we will be joining him again next week for one of his campus tours. Okay, yeah. well, uh, now let's, let's, let's move on to motions. Mm -hmm. How many have been passed so far and what is the expected impact? It's just the two, the one that passed in Garissa last yes. week on Friday and the one that passed in Nandarwa yesterday. Okay, maybe we can, we, we can, we, we can get w w what impact uh, is expected. Yeah, by passing a motion, a county assembly makes a commitment to, to pay for the education of the kids with persons with autism in their county. Yes. So for instance, Garissa, we, we, we are yet to do, we, we are in the process of doing a and a survey on how many individuals with autism do we have in Garissa. So now that the county has committed to provide services for them, yes. that's what's expected. They will provide cutting edge services for each one of their persons from the day they get there, from the day we meet them to up to the time they graduate from their public institutions, from their high school, primary schools or high schools. Yeah. Yeah. We really don't have a model as such in Kenya. Again, yeah. counties like Garissa and Nyandarwa, uh -huh. they are doing something that has not been done in Kenya. Yeah, because yeah. Because primarily what we do in the United States is a child gets diagnosed with, with autism. They are county pledges to educate them from first grade all the way up to high school. Yes. And the county also ensures they, they get employable skills mm -hmm. after they graduate high school. Yes. So nothing has actually been tried of the sort in Africa. And I'm I, I very I'm very proud of the Garissa County and Andaro County for embracing this. Yeah. So that's and and yeah, my, this is what I wanted to ask. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not have national policies that mm -hmm. you know uh, address autism. And how do we make sure that uh, these kids, uh, uh, these people, the, the kids or the people that their needs are addressed? You see, maybe things like treatment, or if someone wants help. Uh, on, on a, uh, wants help uh, maybe from an autistic perspective like an autistic person wants help on that side so how what's the plan yeah they are not there is not a national policy in Kenya but they are international standards okay and Kenya can is not an island Kenya can also use the international standards and that's what we'll be we are doing at autism rights we yes. at autism rights use standards that are championed by the Center for Disease Control in the United States. Yeah. So as we embrace them here, the government will come around. Mm -hmm. In April there was a seminar on autism at the in, uh, at Safari Park Hotel and Cicely Karioki, the I think she's the public, she's the permanent secretary in education, was at the conference and she she prayed to to work with the with organizations and persons with autism to ensure there is an autism policy in Kenya. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the works already. Uh. Well, Hella. Yeah. There, I, I, I can imagine stigma is a lot when it comes to people with autism, and the African community especially perceives that as if you find someone in your neighborhood who who is autistic, they think it could be witchcraft, it could be, you know, any, it could be a curse. So how far have you been able to, through the sensitization, how far have you been able to eliminate the stigma? 
or to the misconceptions that come with autism? Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm, well, we, had, we did a lot of work when we were here in April. I think that when we were doing the trainings, that was a huge part of it. You know, hearing some of the things that the parents had to say about what was going on in their communities mm -hmm. and then having us talk to them about what was fact and what was fiction was really important. As well, we did a whole media tour while we were here, and the response that we got from people online and you know, from people who saw our interviews was really, really important to hear what was happening, hear the questions that people were asking, and really just start that conversation. Yeah. And so, um, how can society participate in saving people uh, who, how, how can society participate in including people with autism, in including them in this sense, including them in the, in the, in the sense that, you know, they, they, uh, they are able to accommodate them and not making them feel uh, maybe, you know, special or, I, I don't know the word, not, uh, yeah, yeah the special. Stigma, Why? Yeah, the stigma. Yeah, and isolated. So, yeah, and isolated. How can society participate in? driving that yeah i think we can do that as individuals acceptance acceptance and one of our the reason we do this awareness campaigns is to create awareness yes. because you see as as people remain ignorant p individuals with autism will be stigmatized and isolated so it's this goes back to individual responsibility so me you and everybody else in the studio mm -hmm. if you are open and accepting to persons with autism and then to there will be uh that's how we started that's how we started yes yeah and honestly it's from like dr Lincoln said everyone not only the people who have children with autism in their families but if you hear about anyone who has a children child with special needs mm -hmm. you know just offer a helping hand or just words of support to say that you're there if they need you for anything yeah. because i think there is that sense here that they need to hide away you know mm -hmm. and not really bring themselves out into the community yeah. and just being open and supportive is yeah people really get harsh get judged harshly in the yes. community when yeah when maybe they, they know that you have an autistic kid or someone else with any type of disorder they yeah. tend to be judged harshly yeah unfortunately now it's one in 40 every school going kids have autism so there is a very like high likelihood that oh, Every one of us knows somebody or have heard about somebody with autism. They are our brothers, our sisters, our nephews, our nieces. So we, we can't stigmatize them. We can't, shut, we can't just shut them out of the community. Yes. We just have to embrace them. And that's why awareness like this is good. Media personalities like you are doing such a great job in creating the awareness. Thank you. Yeah, we can't just ignore it. And not only the public, too, the government yes. needs to come in. Like you mentioned, there is no public policy on autism in Kenya. Yeah. Like we can, this, I'm, I'm very worried when I talk about autism in Kenya because we are kind of looking at a lost generation. They are, the last time we did a statistical prediction there are about 700,000 kids with autism in Kenya now 700,000 and that doesn't include most of the ones who get left at home those who get who get kicked from the public schools and they are just left at home those so are the ones that have come forward those the are ones the ones who have come forward so we could we could we could confidently predict there are 1 million kids or more with autism in Kenya mm -hmm. and there is no public policy nobody is doing anything about it so that's that's we are going to lose a whole generation if we don't do anything yes yeah yeah that that, that that's for sure yeah. so as we wind up i would mm -hmm. want uh you dr lincoln and hella to just you know give us a summary or uh of what you see the future of autistic people is the future for autism is very in bright in kenya in kenya yeah, it's, start it's, from it's, there yeah it's very bright with the interventions Research shows autism is not a deathbed. With interventions, individuals with autism can live fully productive lives. Mm -hmm. As awareness becomes, comes into Kenya, people are embracing these interventions. Once the government chips in, like the MCAs, the places with emotions, and we are able to treat these persons with autism, yes. their future is bright. Of course, there needs to be action from our legislative bodies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, I think one of the things that is hardest when you find out that your child has autism is knowing what to do next, where to go, who do you turn to. And I think that I see progress being made in that. With more support groups for parents and yes. families, and then the work that we're doing to try and make sure that there are places in schools for children with autism as well. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for that discussion. At least we've been able to uh, to keep track of and to see the developments that have been there this far. And for that, I'm grateful. And, mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. If yes. There are, if you want to know more about the things that we are doing at Autism Lights, you can check us out. Okay. Our website is uh, autismlights.org, and we're on Facebook with Autism Lights Inc., as well as Twitter, Autism Lights Inc., and Instagram. Yeah, and anyone watching out there who is in Nakuru, Samburu, Roiro, Garissa, Nyandarwa, we are coming there in the next two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all we had prepared for you today. And thank you so much for staying with us and seeing, us to, uh, seeing the discussion to the end. In case you missed anything or you would want to revisit this conversation, just go to, a, to our YouTube page that is Y254 channel. You'll find this and much more there for you. So up, uh, until next time, just keep watching Y254 for more amazing programs and youthful vibes. Bye-bye.